Now, when we come to look at colour mixing and colour theory, the sheer term colour theory causes panic in a lot of people because they assume they've got to go and read a whole library full of books about which colours match with other colours and which ones mix together and don't mix together. And when you pick up the average manufacturer's uh, paint chart, such as this, the colour chart, you can see there's probably, I don't know, perhaps 120, 130 colours here. So although they're all very pretty, for the newcomer to painting, whether it's acrylics or any other uh, medium, it can be quite daunting knowing which of these colours to pick. So let's simplify it for you. Now that's a bit better, isn't it? This is what you've probably heard, the colour wheel. And the first thing to remember is, that people worry about is, oh, I've got to learn the colour wheel. Well, really, there's nothing to learn at all, because all that you're looking at is the way that the primary colours and secondary colours are set out and conveniently set out in the form of a wheel. So that's the only thing you have to worry about. The wheel isn't relevant at all. It's a means of you learning easily. So if we take the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue, and don't worry about which particular blue, yellow and red this is, because if you get a room full of 20 artists, they'll all have a different opinion as to which is the best red, blue and yellow to form primary colours. It doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about it. But as you can see, if you mix blue and yellow together like that, you end up with green which is a secondary colour because it's mixed with two primaries. If you mixed red and yellow together, you end up with orange, another secondary colour. And the third secondary colour is purple, where you mix the red and the blue together. And that really is all that you need to know because those six colours, when they're intermixed even more, will give you a whole series of different colours. For example, if you mixed red and green together, you'd end up with brown. Now, the other term that might worry you that you've probably heard of are complementary colours and colours opposite each other on the colour wheel. Well, all that simply means is that a colour that is opposite another colour on this little wheel is its complementary colour. So, for instance, green is the complementary colour of red which is mixed with the two other primaries, blue and yellow. Purple is the complementary colour of yellow. Purple is mixed with the red and the blue. And then if we take the final uh, primary colour, blue, its complementary colour is orange, which is a mix of red and yellow. And that's really all the complementary colours are. It's the colours that are literally opposite each other on this theoretical wheel that mean that these colours, when they're put next to each other in a picture, vibrate and enhance the brilliance of each other's colours. And artists have exploited this uh, phenomenon for centuries. The funny thing is that when you mix the colours together, instead of putting them side by side, they dull each other down. And so artists have also exploited that side of things because instead of adding black to blue to darken it, the really clever thing and the professional thing to do is to add a touch of orange and that will tone it down. If you add black or some other very, very dark colour, it'll kill that colour stone dead. Add a touch of its complementary colour, however, and it tones it down. And the reason that it tones it down is that you've got blue and then you're mixing a touch of the red and yellow together to make orange and putting that in with the blue. Now, if you've ever wondered why you've created mud in your paintings and you don't know why, perhaps hopefully now you'll start to understand because what you've probably done is to mix the primary colours of blue, red and yellow and or the complementaries of uh, purple, green and orange together in the wrong proportions at the wrong time. And so all that you're doing is creating various shades of grey. Mix them together strong enough and you'll end up with a black. And in fact, we're not going to use black at all in the main part of the course. I'll be showing you how you can use the primary colours mixed together quite strongly to create a whole range of blacks 
which is going to save you some money as well because you don't need to buy a tube of it. But in, in simple terms, in two or three minutes, that is the colour theory, complementary colours, the colour wheel, colours opposite each other on the colour wheel. That's it covered. For now, you don't need to know any more than that. That's going to stand you in good stead for the rest of this course.